Okay, welcome to, um... Down for the Pirate Radio. We're going to try that one again. Yeah. Three, two, one. You can't do the countdown too many times. I need, I need the silence to cut everything. Welcome to... Down for the Pirate Radio. I am one of your hosts, Davey Beauchamp. Um, and because we haven't done this in a while, I'm just going to say a little bit about who I am and then you'll do the same. Um... I am a author, podcaster, uh, anthologist, editor, filmmaker, documentarian now. Um, I pretty much do anything I can with words. Um, my, my big sort of claim to fame, or the thing that I, I take most pride in, is my Writers for Relief anthology series where I get a lot of big name sci-fi fantasy authors, some uh, mid-level sci-fi sci fantasy authors, and some people just starting out. And we basically put together an anthology to uh, help out a good cause. Um, I've done one for Katrina, one for the Bay Area Food Bank, and I'm currently working on one to help uh, relief efforts still that are going on in Japan. And to my right, I have Angela Pritchett, who is a phenomenal, I'll give her a chance to say something, phenomenal actress and costumer. Um, but I'll let her tell you more about herself. But she is rock and roll awesome. Okay, well, I'm Angela Pritchett. I'm an award-winning costumer. If you've gone to a lot of the sci-fi or anime cons on the East Coast, you might have seen me costume. Um, I used to play oboe in costume for the costume contest. Um, I'm an actress. I was the lead in a film called Pork Chops, and I've directed three short horror films and do lots and lots of stuff. I do special effects makeup and kill people and zombies and stuff. She's pretty awesome, like I said. So. Lots of weird stuff. Yes. Um, but we're here today to talk about... Um, Doctor Who! Yes, Doctor Who. And more specifically, the latest Christmas special. Um, oh wow, I forgot the title of it. It is... The Doctor, the Widow, and the Warrior. That's it, yes, that's <laughs> it. Um, so let's jump in. Um, what did we really like about this episode? This episode was fun. I mean, it was very atmospheric. It had the... the World War II setting instead of the more modern setting that we're kind of used to seeing with the Christmas specials. So it was set in a different time. I mean, like, the one we did earlier, Voyage of the Damned, is set on a spaceship, but it's still yeah. set in modern time. So this one was really cool to see it from a different time perspective, even though you had the futuristic type stuff with the guys and the thing, but you had, it was set more in World War II. So that was kind of cool, because it's a different change for the Christmas specials. Um, I got to say, I like the prequel episode, which they don't show with it, you had to go to BBC or uh, America, uh, their YouTube channel, to see the um, the prequel, which was great, because it all involved a red button, an answering machine, and the doctor on a cell phone, um, and which was which was great. And then I think the, the the opening shots in this episode were absolutely phenomenal, a lot of fun. Um, I think the mother of this really sells the entire She's episode. Too great actress um, slash character for this, yeah. this Christmas special. And then, of course, the uh, last five minutes of the episode, uh, I think are just heart-wrenching uh, emotionally, which I think is something Moffat does really, really well. And don't mess with Amy with a water gun. If you're a Christmas caroler, don't go to Amy and Rory's house. I wish I had a water gun right now. Oh, That'd be so much fun. No. Snowdollick will exterminate you. What, with his carrot? Yes, Snowdollick will get you. <laughs> Um, I am not a cat nor a dog that misbehaves me. Snowdollick will exterminate. I'm not saying anything to that one. She's about the misbehaving part. Um, so what didn't we like about this episode? I didn't like the really cheesiness right when they get into the really gorgeous big house. I think my, my only real issue with that entire scene, because I think what Moffat was going for was those first few mom moments when we see the doctor and Amelia Pond together, you know, eating. I think he was trying to recapture that moment That's with these new characters. Yeah. Um, I didn't like the sitting room and the moving chairs. I thought that was just way over it's the really top. Really campy. Um, I didn't mind the bedroom because the bedroom was awesome. Um, both bedrooms. Um, I, I just I, I like the panther bit. <laughs> yeah, for what's up in the attic, which was actually his TARDIS. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think that was the. My, my only real complaint was just that opening shot yeah. um, with that room. Because to me, we, we've discussed this a number, number of times, which ones are our favorite. 
I think this is probably my favorite of the bunch so far. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with this episode. Because um, they didn't take itself too seriously. And maybe that's some of its weak points. Is it didn't take itself too seriously at times. Um, I did think it was a little overly convenient to bring the father back. I would have liked to have seen it without the father coming oh, back. Oh no, that wouldn't be a good ending to a Christmas special. It'd be really sad. That'd be like a replay of Voyage of the Dam where all the good people die. Well, it would be similar to no. last year's where, you know, the female lead dies again. Well, yeah, but there was still a good happy ending to that. I think I think Moffat could give us a good happy ending. They, they, you can't really do it. The kids' parents are already dead. They kind of made it that one shining star that led him home. Yeah, I don't know. I just... I really wish that had not happened. I liked it. I thought it was great when the airplane landed. Yeah, but what about what about the what about the injured guy in the back of the plane? He's still sitting back there, bleeding out, dying, chilling. Oh, I'm See, hey, look, Marge was pretty pretty assertive. I'm pretty sure after she saw her husband, she then helped that poor guy. Yeah, I just I just felt like that was something that was dropped because nothing was mentioned thereafter well, about it. Well, I mean, come on now, they don't have to mention everything. Yeah, but that was it sort of blaring. But that was something blaring. I thought at the beginning where you know they're in the plane he's he's back there you know super injured and all of a sudden we're, he's the day saved for the father but what about this poor guy bleeding in the back he's, he's saved he was all right pretty and sure why he didn't we see him? because he wasn't important to the story well, i think it was extremely important since it's uh, since i mean why even say there's a guy back there injured if they weren't going to bring it back or could there be a cut scene that we didn't see yeah, maybe so don't be so you know Technical. Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Doctor Who. I must say all the technicalities in it. And that's for you, Rich. No, that's my that's <laughs> me as a writer. I wouldn't have left the gaping hole like that. What? I'm still agreeing with Rich's comment from being on the Logic on panel. What was the comment? <laughs> Having to talk about all the specificalities of Doctor Who. I can't help it. I mean that's I don't claim many fandoms. Doctor Who's one of mine. And I think part of I think part of the problem is, is Moffat does such an incredible job normally. He doesn't leave those loose ends unless there's a reason. Because um, I think with some of the dialogue, I think we're going to see the mom again. Maybe. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we, we don't... We saw the pirates again. We saw, we saw um, Craig again. So, I mean, it just, it really felt like this was a big, the beginning of a bigger story that we just haven't seen yet. Or at least that's what, that's the way I take away from this. I like the daughter, too. I did like the daughter. Why? Well, I thought it was really funny when she snuck up into the attic and she's like, oh, so no Panthers, huh? And he's like, famous last words. Yeah. I like that. I thought they gave her, she, she was, was a good character too. She wasn't quite as outgoing as her mom. Yeah, I thought, was, I thought the two of, I thought Matt Smith and, 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 the, and the girl really played well off each other. Me too. Yeah, there's a lot of fun there. I, and this was just a really fun episode. And I love the tree people. They were so pretty. Again, costume is one of them. Eventually. No, no, I'm not gonna costume. I still want to do Weeping Angel just so I can scare little kids. And Allegra. And Allegra. <laughs> yes, Allegra. Remember, don't blink, don't turn away. I'm just staring at the camera there for a second for Allegra's sake. Um, Allegra, don't look behind you. No, look yeah. behind you. Forget that. Look behind you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I like the tree people, and I thought it was really cool how. <laughs> Oh, like it had to be a woman they had to put the crown on yeah i thought that was a nice touch and what about the three like almost idiotic I, pilots I don't know. Of, of that robot mech thing yeah. i wanted more so there was it, it seemed like there was more story there that we lost yeah i don't know they almost seemed like they were just kind of thrown in there last minute too. they give her the they give her the mech in order yeah, to, to get give the her kids. the mech so she could just plow through yeah. there to get to her kids. But, but I did like how she handled them, you know, how she played off of, and, you know, played off the other woman, um, you know, showing the difference between um, this alien race that looks like humans, which might be from New, 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 New York, because we don't exactly know when this this other planet is, the time is set, because they actually had to go to the time vortex to get back home. Mm -hmm. So there's no telling when that was, but I don't know, I felt there was more of a story there that we didn't get. I felt like this could have been at least another half an hour longer episode they get all the questions answered to, to flesh out the story even more and the doctor really has a thing for um modern day england to quote big bang theory oh yes <laughs> quote big bang theory yes yeah which means wait 
Were they watching a Christmas episode, do you think? No, but a lot of it took place in England. A lot of classic yeah. who did, too. Yeah, I mean, so. it did. But Classic Who also went to a lot more planets than Modern Who. I mean, if you really look at Sarah it. Sarah Jane's uh-huh. stuff was always, like, going back to England. She's like, I'm not leaving again. And Percy was like, "Yeah, but I'm going to this awesome planet. She's like, I'm done. Well, I mean, I, one thing I liked about Sarah Jane's first episode, I mean, we're totally jumping off the track here, is she thought the Doctor was the villain of the episode. Um, because her, they were both transported back in time, thanks to the Santorans. Santorans. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty tree people. Yes. Yay, blue boxes. I want a big blue package that takes me into a pretty Narnia-looking world. That'd be awesome. I'm not saying anything. What? What? I'm not saying anything. Uh-huh. I thought the Christmas tree was nice. Christmas tree was really pretty, and I did like how he had the TARDIS mm-hmm. up there, like his wardrobe. Yeah. So that was really cool. So, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's really not a lot to say, because we've talked about a lot of things in last week's episode um, about upcoming conventions we're at, some of the some of the who news that's been going on. Oh, one thing that I, I didn't mention was um, it, it seems that there was a chance that Sophie Aldred was going to make an appearance in Sir Jane Adventures if Liz hadn't passed away. Because um, there was a, a, a recent interview where they had uh, McCoy and um, Sophie uh, together and they're doing an interview and they're talking about different things. I think uh, McCoy was talking about, you know, The Hobbit and a few other things. Um, and yeah, that's one of the things that she said, that there was a real potential for her character to appear on the show, which I think would have been amazing to see those two characters uh, uh, together. Um, as as you see a, gr- a grown up ace, which I think is one of the exciting things about coming to the 50th, you know, we, we, might, we get to see how these characters have changed hopefully since they left the doctor um since we've only really gotten to see that with sarah sarah so. um and joe now yeah um and a few of tenants companions uh, we've seen what, what what they've gone on to do um so um is there anything you want to plug of stuff that that's coming up to remind people because we're getting closer in february to um misty con what the hell con um, I think this Stella episode's con. I think this episode's gonna air right for what the hell con. It's a free free con that's at Guilford College in Greensboro. Um, a lot of it's a lot of fun. Um, hopefully we're gonna be doing Very a, a mini key episode. Very low compared to most conventions. Yeah, it's a good first time convention. It has a different feel. Um, a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, we got some conventions coming up. You get get all that information on Facebook or watch uh, or the website or just check out last week's episode where we really go in depth. Um, one thing we forgot to mention um, on last week's episode, um, I want to congratulate Jason and his wife Yay! on the bor- yes. on the birth of Stormageddon. And the funny thing is, is Dark Lord. that happened actually not shortly thereafter our it's panel. Only a few days after the convention. No, a day. It? It was a day. Yeah, because yeah, it was, it, right it was, after it was Sunday on. or Monday. It happened. Yeah. So we were this close to having a live birth on GPR, which would have been cool. Hey, what better way to uh, welcome in Storm Come again? Come on, that poor kid is already doomed to be a nerd. He doesn't need to be born in a sci-fi con. Or he's going to be a jock to the shock of everybody. No, no, no. He, he has no chance. You never know. He has no chance with the two parents. No, he has no chance. Rebelling, you know, go opposite. I just see how much his father rebelled. <laughs> so, yes. there's no chance. Yes, but, um, but yes. Oh, so congratulations. congratulations. Yes, and you still can't have my adipose. But I believe Angelo is maybe... You're going to get a little derpy TARDIS. Yeah, Stormy will be getting a little derpy TARDIS. Um, trying to think of anything else, because we covered so much in last week's episode. Yeah. Um, but it's a goal. If you haven't seen the Christmas episode, I'm sorry. We probably just spoiled a lot of it for you. And it's um, February. You better have seen it by yeah, now. Yeah, so come on now. And hope But it's a lot of fun. Watch it if you haven't. And... Try to ignore everything we just said. Yeah. And hopefully, I mean, we really didn't give a lot away about the plot. I mean, honestly. It's fun. So. It's, it's a real fun episode. All the Christmas specials are fun, though, I think. I um, like most of them, so. I mean, I like most of them. I mean, you know, said some I like better than others. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's with everything. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll be getting some more teasers about um, this upcoming season of Who, which starts in August, because they are filming right now. So hopefully we'll be seeing stuff. I mean, we will be seeing the loss of two companions, yeah. 
a new new companion coming on. Um, it's and it's all building towards the fiftieth, which I just realized something. I because in a few of the episodes I talked about, um, I've talked about you know River how we pretty much we're pretty much done with that character. But there is still one very important scene we have not seen, and I think we haven't seen that on purpose. Can you take a guess what scene I'm, I'm thinking of? What? The scene where um, whatever doctor it's going to be gives River the screwdriver. Mm -hmm. I don't think Moffat would have talked about it all the way back to um, Science of the Library if we weren't going to eventually see that scene. And I think we're either going to see that scene this season or... Because River did say she had seen multiple faces, but when she saw Tennant, she's yeah. like, oh, yeah. So face. So I'm wondering if this is... If we don't see River this season, I think we're going to see her again in the 50th. And that's where we're going to see the, the passing of the screwdriver, which that will let us all know that this is when she dies. Um, Sad. But as I mean... two episodes, too, though. Not um, every time. But yeah, that's, that's I think, a scene we're going to be seeing uh, in the near future. Um, uh, anything you want to say? Anything you've heard? Anything uh, you want to talk about, Doctor Who-wise? Any of the books you've been reading? Because I, I know you've been consuming the Doctor Who books. Well, I've, been, I've been consuming more of the audios than anything. I have an awesome friend named Ev who lives in England. And she brought me three of the Doctor Who audios. They're exclu the exclusive audio ones that are only available on CD, not in book form. And so they were great. They were beautiful. There were two 11th Doctor and one 10th Doctor. Yeah, um, we listened to the one of the 11th ones. Yeah, the Hounds of Artemis. Which was a lot of fun on our way back from Elagica. And, uh, do you want to say why you liked it? or and so I just liked the story. It was set kind of an old Egyptian-style like archaeological dig type thing. So it was just a fun story. Yeah. And, and, and this is going to sound weird. You remember a lot of the storytelling style of Dracula. Mm -hmm. Because parts of it were the granddaughter... Of, of one of the archaeologists reading Amy's journal. There was two people reading yeah. it. Matt Smith was reading all of the doctor's parts and just from that point of view, and then you had this female, who I can't remember who was reading it, but yeah. she was reading all these parts for Amy. Yeah. So it was really cool. From Amy's journal that she had found in her grandfather's effects. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd actually recommend that one as well. Um, it was a lot of fun, and hopefully we'll get a, a chance to listen to the other ones yeah, on the way right to MistyCon. So. Um, and enjoy those. Were, were those big finished productions? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. all big finished. Rock on. So, um, oh, um, this actually just made the rounds. Um, I should have talked about it in last week's episode. But have you seen the 10 minute every, uh, uh, a shot from every single Doctor Who episode thing? I didn't get to watch it yet. Absolutely incredible. I don't agree with some of the shots they did, but oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, my hat goes off to them. They did a phenomenal job with because they, they didn't use a lot of the audio from the, the the stills. They actually take dialogue from that doctor, from, from you know, some classic scenes, and run it with all these clips. But, I mean, they go through all of Classic Who, all of New Who, then all of the spin-off things that have happened, some of the bigger fan ones, and then all the all the Christmas, I mean, all the um, ch Children in Need specials. I mean, it is amazing. And, I mean, you get a sense of... 50 Years of Doctor Who in 10 minutes. I, I really recommend it. Um, I don't think I have it linked on the um, GPR page yet, but it, it, it is coming. Um, I highly recommend you watch it. It's 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 worth the 10 minutes. It will blow you away. Um, and I guess that's everything this week. Um, and uh, this is, uh, we'll see most of you, hopefully a lot of you, at uh, MistyCon, StellarCon. Mystery Con in Virginia, StellarCon in High Point, North Carolina. And then... Um, uh, what the hell con for a few of you in Greensboro, North Carolina, and uh, be on the lookout for us at other conventions, hopefully. Um, and if if you are a con runner, or you want to see GPR at your con, let us know because most of us are that are watching. Most of you guys that are watching this know of us, and you know we're we sit on lots of Doctor Who panels for you guys anyway. Which you know, so just have a GPR panel, and you'll get some phenomenal guests on that panel talking and make about sure Doctor Who. that you like our Facebook page and yeah. subscribe to our YouTube channel yeah and hopefully we'll be at 100 uh, likes um, by the time this episode airs or shortly thereafter um, oh and also for people attending MistyCon and StellarCon who actually come up to us and talk to us 
we actually have a surprise for you, which you don't even know about yet. Ooh. Yes, it, I, I have some really cool swag that I've made up um, to give away to people that actually come talk to us, come to the panel, and then actually make it through the panel, because that's key. Um, but our panels are fun. If you want, click down below this if you're on the Facebook page yeah. and watch the Illogicon panel. It's yes. pretty crazy. Yeah, it, it does get chaotic, but I'm gonna sort it's of- fun. I'm gonna wheel in the chaos a little. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, totally. Um, but um, yeah, there's gonna be some really cool swag um, that I'll be giving away that I'm really proud of. Um, so until next time, which I have no idea what we're gonna be talking about. I'm happy to film. We're gonna talk some classic who next time if all goes well. Um, and uh, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off. Okay.